In today's JavaScript debugging tip video, we're again looking at the console API. This time, it's a method that's going to allow you to time the execution of any individual part of your code. And this will allow you to see what parts of your code are running slowly, which will help you better focus your efforts into making your code more efficient. So in this video, we're going to take a look at another part of the console API, which is console time and its corresponding method console time end. And what this set of methods does is it allows us to literally time how long a certain part of the code takes to execute. And I've seen a lot of weird ways of trying to solve this problem of calling a function that takes a, a timestamp and then taking another timestamp once it's finished and then comparing them and it gets the job done. But there's simply no need when the console API has methods built in to do this for us. So jumping in, this is our HTML. Again, nothing we need to talk about there. We'll come into the script. So what we need to do to test console time is to have a bit of code that is going to take a bit of time to run. So we'll just start off with a for loop and we'll say var i equals zero and we'll say i is less than a hundred million. So that's a pretty big number and it's going to take a lot of time, um, relatively speaking, to loop through that. And then inside here, we'll uh, have an if statement and if statements are again relatively speaking they do take a bit of time to run so uh, every time this for loop is running it's triggering this if statement so that's taking up a bit of extra time and we'll say if i is equal to lots of nines so i think that's enough nines and if it does equal that, so that's right at the end of this for loop, then uh, trigger something. So what we're going to do is call console time before the start of our for loop. And uh, we give the console time uh, a name. And this is for the same reason as we gave uh, the console trace a name is just in case we're running multiple instances of console time. Each one has its own name so we can differentiate them. So we'll call this first timer. And so that's going to trigger and then the for loop's going to run. So this is going to start timing things as soon as we call this. And then the for loop's going to run. And if we get to the end of the for loop, so we've got this in here. And of course, we could just put it after the for loop. But I want the if statement in there. So that runs every time because that's going to just take a bit of extra time to compute all of these conditional calls. So then inside here, I'll call console.timeEnd and we'll tell it which timer to end. So that's first timer. And now if we go into our browser, we'll refresh the page and we'll come into the console. And first timer took 345.518 milliseconds. So there you go. That's how long that for loop running over 100 million iterations took. Just under 0.4 of a second. So computers are pretty fast. But uh, there you go. So And we, we can take this further. We could uh, call another one. We could say console.time. And this time we'll call this second timer. And then we'll set timeout. So that obviously set timeout. We give it how long to wait so we can uh, make it longer than uh, just a simple for loop. So we can uh, pass into this an anonymous function and we'll tell it to wait, let's say 2000 milliseconds. And then inside this function is uh, where we'll call console.time end and we want to end second timer. Okay, so we come back into here, refresh it again, 
and we get our first timer out straight away. See, it took slightly less to, time to run this time. And then we get our second timer at 2000.594 milliseconds. So that's just uh, the 0.594 is the overhead of uh, actually triggering the, the, the set timeout and, and whatever else has to go on. And then we actually had 2000 milliseconds of waiting time. And uh, we could take this as far as we want. We could make a third console time and we'll call this third timer. And then inside this set timeout, we'll call another set timeout. And this time we'll end console time end third timer. And we'll let this one run for 3000 milliseconds. Save that. And come back. Refresh. We get our first timer out straight away then our second timer, and then our third timer. So this is uh, the first call, and then we've got our 2000 millisecond wait on our first set timeout. And then that calls the third one, which waits another 3000. So that's why we're up to 5000. And then we've added another bit of overhead. And there you go. So we can take this as far as you want. But that is the basics of console time and console time end. And it's maybe not the most useful for everyday purposes, but if you are building an application that is uh, very time sensitive or you need to squeeze every bit of uh, efficiency out of it, then this could be a lifesaver and you might just save yourself a lot of time in debugging and then that time can then be put into figuring out a more efficient solution for your problems. Now you're able to time the execution of any part of your JavaScript code, so hopefully you'll be able to use that in your own projects. If you did enjoy this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more regular content just like this, including other content about other programming languages and frameworks. And if you happen to be the kind of person who likes to read some of their tips and tutorials, I do a full write-up of every video that I put on YouTube. And if you click on the bottom left of the screen now, you'll head over to the write-up for console.time. But until the next tip video that I do, stay hungry and keep coding.